If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard in Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. All right, everybody, please welcome to PWZ. Uh, author Vinny Berry of his new book out right now is Lance by Chance on um, pro wrestling legend Lance Von Eric. Vinny, how are you? I'm doing good. Thank you very much. Now, I'm uh, reading this book now. Like I said, I was uh, off air. I'm about halfway through it. I'm quite enjoying it. I'm finding out stuff about Lance I did not know uh, and about the Von Erics as well. Um, so tell me, how did this book come about? Well, I have a wrestling website. I read about wrestlers in my spare time. I read about, uh, you know, mm-hmm. veterans or guys on the independent scene. And I uh, was talking to uh, one of the guys here in Texas, uh, James Beard. And uh, a couple of times uh, his uh, uh, Lance Von Eric's name came up a couple of times in our conversations. And I always just thought that. He was interesting. I was, you know, had a lot of questions about what happened to him. And, you know, I, I've worked in the the television news business for the last almost 20 years. So, you know, I'm very in tune to what a good story is or, you know, what's, what's intriguing or what's interesting, you know. And that was mm-hmm. one of those things for me that I was like, wow, man, what a, what a story, right? You know, and... Uh, so anyway, he one day he told me how I can get in touch with him. I reached out to Lance, and uh, the next day we were on the phone talking, and uh, I was writing this story for my website about him. And uh, he was like, you know, for someone who just met me, you know, um, he was willing to tell me the story of what happened and how he was brought into the business and everything. But the whole time he'd be asking me things like, why are you doing this? And where are you going to put this story? And who do you think is going to read it? And do people really care? And nobody cares about this stuff. And I was like, dude, I care, you know? Right. So I think it's um, it's bizarre because we're at an age where a lot of wrestling history, people are interested in the history of wrestling, especially world class was such a rich area. It was, it's uh to me, it was one of my favorites. I used to rush home every day after school and four o'clock in the afternoon, sit down on the couch before doing my homework to watch world class. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's a there's a definitely an interest in world class. I think it's one of the greatest territories of the history of professional wrestling. Well, I was fortunate enough to live in that area, you know, and uh, I, I lived in Louisville, which is about 30 miles north of Dallas. Mm -hmm. And the Von Erichs lived about 10 miles north of me. And um, so it was a real special, you know, time, and it was a special place. And, you know, from time to time, you'd see the Von Erichs, or someone would see the Von Erichs. And, uh, you know, um, that was was the wrestling I knew. You, You know, I saw a little... Uh, some other wrestling uh, programs uh, on television, but I mean that was that was the one that was on all the time. That was the constant. Th- those were the shows I could go to, you know. So, right to me, that was I thought it was an amazing uh, wrestling promotion, and just to be able to live here and go to that those matches was pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, that that is awesome. I lived in Connecticut, so I didn't get the. You know, I just saw it on television because it was on, actually on ESPN. So right. that was pretty exciting. So, like I said, every day after school it was on. So, um, you've mentioned James Beard. Do you uh, you keep in touch with him today? Yeah, we we talk and, from time to time. He's, doing. he's uh yeah he's dealing with the uh, SWE currently. Yeah, that's right. 
That's yeah, a very I, good product too. It really is a really good product. I was um I discovered it probably on the second or third episode that was on YouTube, I think a year and a half ago, two years maybe. And I fell in love with that show. That's I think that's it's it's really old school, bringing back like the old style of wrestling that I grew up with. So getting off topic, but <laughs> no, that's okay. So, no, I I agree. Well, that again, you know, he he was from that era too, right? And so he yeah. knows the formula. And you know, if you you compare what we watched when we were younger to what we're watching today, it's not the same, right? You, you do know? you still watch wrestling today? I do watch. Yes, I do. Yeah. What do you watch? I'm always interested in what other people want to watch wrestling. Well, I I watch SWE. Mm-hmm. I I watch some AEW. Yeah. Um, I watch a little bit of WWE, but not. I mean, if I yeah. if I miss it, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Right. right. Uh, and I I love going in there, um, and just like the other day, I was watching ECW stuff mm-hmm. from 20 years ago. You know. I love going down the rabbit hole on the on the network, man. I mean, yeah. oh, it's it's amazing how you watch one one match and it it links to another guy and another guy, and before you know it, you watch like five main events from different shows, and you're just like, wow, I got my wrestling fix, man. I'm good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I'll do that with like old Mid Atlantic or NWA. Mm-hmm. Like I'll pick a specific year. And then mm-hmm. start, you know, at the beginning of the year, and I'll sit there for like two, three days watching the whole year, and then I'm just like, oh my god, I just overdid it with, you know, Mid Atlantic or whatever. <laughs> so it's it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's just, uh, God, it just takes so much time. To, 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 it's very exciting though. So sure. tell me more about uh, about Van, uh, Lance. Excuse me. Uh, Lance basically was discovered by Rick Hazard while he was out golfing with his uh, girlfriend and her uh, it was, father, correct? No, it was actually David Manning. David Manning? That yeah, is, yeah. Oh, I wrote down Rick Hazard. I don't know why. I, well, I Rick, ha- Rick Hazard's mentioned in the book, but David Manning was right. uh, Fritz von Erich's right-hand man, and he was like right. the, the booker up there at World Class. And mm-hmm. I don't really know uh, how long, you know, mm-hmm. um, since the book came out, I've met some people that are like real timeline driven, mm-hmm. you know, and supposedly, uh, I don't know what the date was, but almost a year prior to Lance coming or maybe even being discovered. I don't, I don't know because I'm not, I mean, it, just the timelines and this happened and that mm-hmm. happened and this happened. And, I mean, yeah. It's important to get your facts straight, but right. I don't live and die by a timeline. Because if you're getting your if you're getting your information off the internet, that's mm-hmm. a crap shit anyway, right? Right. So, right. Uh, but sp- supposedly Michael Hayes came out and said something like, "Oh, is that cousin Lance coming, or or are you gonna bring that cousin Lance to come help your boys?" Or and that happened long prior before. Lance was, mm-hmm. you know, physically in the picture. So I don't, and that's what I heard. I I don't, right. I, I haven't investigated that because I just, the book is done and it is what it is. And, but I, uh, I have a feeling that, you know, Fritz was thinking about this for quite some time. Um, right. And it, to the point where, you know, Kevin was dead set against it. And, uh, but the whole idea of, you know, having a certain amount of Von Erichs, I mean, you just got to understand that, you know, Fritz Von Erich, you know, his boys were the superstars of that uh, territory. And it was all about bottom line. So, you know, if you're going to have carry on one card and you have a card maybe 200 miles away and there is no Von Erich, you're really not making a whole lot of money on that car. You know, you're right. you're probably losing money. So right. if you have Kevin on that one, carry on this one, you know. Uh, but, of course, those those uh, guys were probably being run ragged, too. So, you know, it, it just got to the point where I guess Fritz, you know, needed, you know, Von Erich name, you know, on the marquee and, you right. know, multiple names. 
They said that they would have he would have his sons working two three shows a night at times. Uh, it was yeah, it was it was about two. I mean, it could have yeah. it could have been three, but Lance Lance was working two quite often. And the thing about uh, the the Von Eric boys, the the real Von Eric boys, that, right. that they were um, they had a reputation of not always honoring their commitment and. Whether that was, well, my dad owns the promotion. I don't know what the attitude was. Right. But that was that was the issue that Lance had, you know. Mm-hmm. And so when David passes away, you've got uh, Carrie and, and Kevin and Mike. Well, by 1985, Mike is out with toxic shock syndrome. Lance comes in shortly you know, in October of 1985. And then Kerry has his motorcycle accident in 86. And in 86, prior to that motorcycle accident, Kevin had a shoulder injury. Oh, right. And so there was a period where Lance was the only Von Erich. And he wasn't even a Von Erich. Wow. So he had to, he, he had to have the name that still involved in the company. While well, he guys was all out, yeah. carrying, yeah, he was basically carrying the, the, the promotion, you know? Right, yep. And, and a lot of people don't know he wasn't carrying the, bro- he was carrying the promotion. <laughs> I mean, right. just just because of the fact of, Fred put the name on him, and right. all his boys were either injured or, or just not physically able to, to work at that time, so... It had to be a strain on Lance, and and it it proved to be that it was. Now he was uh, sent down to Portland, right? And, and that's where he worked as Ricky Vaughn after training. Yeah, he uh, he trained for a, a couple months here in Dallas. Just you know, it, it he he makes it sound like it was about eight to ten hours, right? Spread right. out over a period of a that that's the way he made it sound like to me. But then, uh, yeah, he uh, Fritz sent him up to Portland so he can get some wrestling legs under him, so to speak. And uh, when he got up there, uh, Don, Don Owens. Don Owens, the, yep. Yeah, the promoter of uh, Northwest Championship Pacific Wrestling. Pacific Northwest, there. yep. Yeah, Northwest Pacific, Pacific Northwest Championship Wrestling, whatever. And uh, he put the name Ricky Vaughn on him. So, right. um, yeah, that's how that's how that character came to be. And didn't they, uh, let's see, where is it? Did he win the tag titles over there in the Pacific Northwest? He he did. He he actually uh, he held the uh, tag titles with um, Billy Jack Haynes, and he also held the uh, Pacific Northwest champion. Matter of fact. He was the the Northwest Pacific champion when he came down here in in Texas in in that okay. show where they first introduced him as Lance. He had that so then, belt. So Mike went out in uh, October '86, he said, and then that's when he came in to basically help him with the feud against the Freebirds. Um, pretty much, why was you know besides all that craziness with? The boys being so adamant against it, why would Vince, or Vince, Fritz, excuse me, be so adamant about putting the name on him if the boys really did not agree with it and they always thought it was a bad idea? Which, I guess, in the long run, it just kind of, the fans didn't take to it like they, like he, I think he expected it to. Well, I, actually, they did take to it. Really? They, yeah. they didn't take to it when, after Fritz came on television and told the truth, mm. they didn't take take well to it then. <laughs> and they and they and they still don't now. I mean he can't go you know, he he was telling right. me the other day that someone he posted he replied to something on Facebook and someone came back and was calling him the non Von Eric and they're not gonna listen to anything he says because he's not a real Von Eric and he's he goes, golly, man, that that happened a long time ago, and and you know, right. and the fact of the matter is, is that wrestling is an entertainment show, right? Well, 
I mean, some people don't see that see that with wrestling. They get too wrapped up in it. I know I get, I get lost in imagination while watching, you know, but I don't get that wrapped up in it to, it, to go, you know, hey, online trolling. You know, it's a good escape, right? It is exactly. It's a great it, it, escape from reality. It's a great escape, and yeah. it's fun to watch. And you know, uh, you hope that the guys aren't really hurting each other. And you know, yeah. but um, when he came down here. They said he was a Von Eric, and we believed him. Yeah. And uh, maybe it was in the back of the minds of some people, but mm-hmm. nobody, nobody, you know, they go back, go back to, if you go back to those, um, search Lance Von Eric on the WWE Network, and you'll see. Those everybody just wanting a piece of him and touching him and wanting their his autograph and the girls all over him and you know right. that's how they treated the the boys. Now he said one time, you know, and and this is touched in the book. You know, Gary Hart, Gary Hart, you know, has a quote I got from a documentary that's in the book, um, and and he says that oh the fans approach me and. They said, oh, the Von Erichs lie, and, he, you know, he's not really a Von Erich. His name's Kevin Vaughn and all this. And that might be very true. I didn't work in the promotion like yeah. Gary did. So, I'm, you know, I'm sure Gary's experience is totally different than mine. But Lance says that only one person questioned him the whole entire time that he was there, which was almost two years. He said that he only one person questioned him, and it happened to be like a a very close family friend of the Von Erichs. It wasn't it wasn't a relative, but you you know you have those right those uh you know friends that been your friends for all your life, or you know right. your your parents known these people all their life, and then you were born and you just know them. It was like real close people, and um. Even they had to ask. So, you know, it's one of those things that I think a lot of people didn't like the fact that they were duped. But, I mean, that's what wrestling is. You know, Kamala was from Mississippi. Nobody gave him a hard time, you know. And and you can go on and on and on and down the line. You know, the Valiant Brothers weren't brothers. The Arn Andersons aren't even Andersons. And, you know, all this. And, And... and here's the thing. Lance gets a hard time, but nobody says anything about Waldo. Right. And that's right. dad. Right. right. <laughs> right. You know, actually, I think that he's the, the least mentioned one out of this entire thing. I think, the, you know, they mentioned him coming in, but that he was his uh, father, yeah. I guess. And, and well, I don't really I don't really recall. I mean, even back then. Yeah, I well, I I, I uh, when I came across that picture, I, I told Lance we were still doing interviews. I said, "Hey, man, I got a picture of your dad today," and he goes, you "Got a picture of my dad? Well, how did you do that?" I said, "I said, Waldo, dude." <laughs> so, one of the fun, one of the things that I really liked is when they brought him in, and he was sitting. You know, they they put him in the. Brought, invited him in to check out the matches. They put him in a room where all the wives hang out and celebrity types. And that he sat there, and then uh, was a Waylon Jennings was in the same yeah. room sitting there and approached mm-hmm. him. I thought I thought that was amazing. That I, I didn't know that Waylon Jennings was a uh, pro wrestling fan. So. Well, he's he's quite the living. You know, at that time he was quite the living legend, yeah. right? In, yeah, in, in Texas. You know. Yeah. So yeah, it was and like he says. He wouldn't have known who he was, but, you know, um, he said he was a nice guy, and, yeah, but, you know, that that goes to show that, you know, I mean, wrestling does touch a lot of people, you know, so there's a lot of a lot of famous people uh, in that area that I guess Fritz knew and, you know, mm-hmm. invited him or, or he wanted to go. He was in the, he was in the uh, perfect place to be, right, the VIP right. area, I guess you can right. call it. On October 28, 1985, he wrestled Ric Flair in Fort Worth, Texas in the uh, NWA World Title match. Uh, is there anything you could tell me? Did you guys touch upon that? 
Yeah, it's it's in there a little bit. He talks yeah. about um, he talks about that night when he meets Rick. Now, this is information that I found out afterwards. Okay, okay. that so uh, I don't have the the let's see on the top of my head. It, it was maybe November third of that year. Mm-hmm. It was about a week after the match with Ric Flair that he actually dropped the uh, the Pacific Northwest title to Bobby Jaggers. Okay, right. so you got to remember October sixth. He comes down to Dallas to the Cotton Bowl show. This is Lance Von Eric. He had the Northwest title on him as Ricky Vaughn up there. And uh, I guess he goes back. Now, this is what I heard after the fact, that when he came down here to wrestle Ric Flair, it wasn't so much of Lance Von Eric wrestling Ric, Ric Flair as it was that he earned that title shot by having the, the Pacific Northwest title. Okay, and 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 that's what I heard. Now I didn't confirm that, but that's what somebody told me afterwards, which I found very interesting. Right. That uh, that that's how he he wrestled Lance. Now when I was living there, I don't remember that match happening. Of course, I you know have I mm-hmm. had the magazine then and have it now, but you know thinking back on my memory, I just it, it's like a blur to me. Is the match right. so? Yeah, I don't, re- I don't recall that ever happening. I read about it while, you know, re- doing research and such. Um, the other one is that he, what was it here? They ended up teaming up with the young Ultimate Warrior, a.k.a. the Dingo Warrior, during his stand in Texas. That's so, right. Did he have any cool, any interesting stories? Not, you know, don't give away too much of the book, but did he have anything else to talk to him, talk to you about him? Uh yeah, he he likes he 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 liked Jim very much. They uh, yeah. they got along. Of course, you know I I kind of noticed that you know why we were doing the book that he kind of gravitated toward the the guys that lifted. You know, um, right? He got along with Billy Jack Haynes there for a while, and they worked out. He got along with uh, Steve Simpson. They worked out. He got along with Kerry. You know, they worked uh-huh. out. So there's a there's a common theme here, you know. Uh, but yeah, he he talks about a time, and and this is in the book that him and Jim Helwig um, they met a lady who uh, was like a, a PR or like a I guess like a, a manager that kind of helped them set up right. like autograph signings or meet and greets and stuff like that, and. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a uh, story in the book that that they're out in another city together, and there's a, a unique situation that happens, and uh, I'll share it for the readers to read the book. But what's so funny about that whole situation is in the in the beginning of the book, something happens where Lance witnesses something uh, in Portland at a hotel, and he's kind of shocked by it. But later down the road, two years into the business, he's doing the same thing that that had shocked him. So it's kind of funny how the wrestling business kind of shaped him a little bit or kind of mm-hmm. wore off on him and things that he, he might not have done prior to getting into wrestling. He, he, the business was kind of rubbing off on him, you know, where he was kind of letting his guard down and, you know... Uh, it was it was changing him. I do see that he had a uh, he did do a t- tour in New Japan in uh, 1986, where he wrestled the uh, Kimura in October. Of, uh, the does he touch upon that? Because that, that I never knew. I never knew he did a tour of Japan until uh, reading this. Yeah, it didn't didn't work out very well. Yeah. <laughs> so well, Americans so, t- typically make out very well in the you know in Japan. Well, he'd never been to Japan, and right. Japan was quite a culture shock for him. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't; uh, he just didn't adjust well. He didn't; uh, he felt very out of place. Uh, right. The wrestling style is very different over there, mm-hmm. and when he went over there, he didn't wrestle for like four days, so he had a lot of time on his hand before. 
So he, he ended up getting drunk and he he was drunk the day he had to wrestle and, and he wasn't drinking beer, he was drinking scotch. So he got a little drunker than what he uh, intended to do and he had a nightmare of a match and uh, he was called out on it afterwards by uh, Don Callis who was there wrestling as the Jackal and he was like, what what the hell Don, was that? How Don did Callis was him? wrestling then? He was wrestling then. Oh my gosh, he's older than I thought. <laughs> I didn't yeah, know that and he, he was... Yeah. And so he was really surprised that Lance got over there. Well, to to just kind of move things along, yep. the next time he wrestled, which I don't know if it was the next night or the, the night, you know, later that week, but he didn't drink. And he had a much better showing. So he was mm-hmm. approached by Don Callis again. And Don said, hey, man, you you did well tonight. And he goes, well, I wasn't drunk. And he said, well, I figured it had to be something like that, you know. And right. uh, so the next day after that, Lance just left. So he w- he basically went AWOL on that tour. Right. And so that, that story is touched in the book. It goes a little deeper. Uh, there's some information uh, about Kevin in there. Kevin right. and uh, uh, Kevin kind of had his opinion about it, and so right. that's the phrase in the book. And Lance has his opinion about it, and and there it is. It's I guess it's for the reader to kind of to kind of right. figure out whose side is the side. Right after that, he uh, basically he left and ended up going to Wild West Wrestling, uh, basically. Now, with dis- because of disputes for more money, uh, and then that's when, you know, for the very, very rare occasion in uh, professional wrestling at that time period, obviously it's a different time period now, um, Fritz broke kayfabe on TV announcing that it was all a ruse. So, um, and then Wild West did not last that long of a, <clears throat> excuse me, did not last that long as a promotion either. Uh, was it just a year or two? Yeah. It was, yeah, it wasn't long at all. Yeah. But to to kind of clear up things on that, and, and, you know, a lot of people, I've heard this many from, you know, that he left World Class to go to Wild West, and he did wrestle in Wild West. And, mm-hmm. um, but we you got to remember, Lance would have never been a wrestler had David Manning not met him on the golf course and Fritz, uh, you know, kind of enticed him like, hey, you can make a lot of money. Right. Lance didn't, Lance didn't want to be a wrestler. Right. And so when he would have been happy here's 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 what happened with world class and how he he left world class mike von eric's funeral was april last week of april mm-hmm. I, I i again i i just can't remember the date right now but it was in april and uh two weeks after his funeral was the uh, third annual Parade of Champions. Okay. And so, um, I guess the fourth, I'm sorry, the fourth annual Parade of Champions. Well, Lance didn't wrestle on that. And he didn't wrestle on that because Nord Barbarian had, like, slammed him in, you know, did a body slam but didn't do it properly. Right. And instead of landing on his back, he landed square on his shoulder and it kind of jammed his shoulder. And so he was, he was hurt. And so um, he went to the funeral. That's in the book. Wasn't real comfortable with all that. And, you know, you'll you'll read about why he was there and why he was asked to be there. And he basically just stopped coming in. He, he gave his, his uh, shoulder some time to heal, but he didn't call. And they didn't call. And what basically happened was a stalemate. Now, Lance basically went AWOL because he's wrestling two times a night, carrying the world-class promotion, and right. being the only Von Eric wrestling, 
and covering for Fritz's son because, like I said, they weren't always reliable. And that was that came from everybody that I interviewed. Everyone said, "Yeah, that they didn't show up a lot," you know. And these, you know, they were really good about showing up for their television shows, but these little towns right. and stuff like that that they right. didn't always do that. So Lance picked up that burden. Lance got tired of that. And so he basically took some time off. Nobody called each other. And and basically, now when Ken was running that, that uh, Wild West, Wild West. Okay. He, uh, he liked Ken. And the way Lance, it's, it's funny because a lot of people uh, like yourself or some people that read the book and why didn't you put more Wild West in there and he wrestled more in Wild West, you know. Lance did not talk about Wild West. Right? The way that Lance explained it to me, in, in the way it sounded, it was like it was just something in passing to do because he had already made a plan to leave the country. And he was he was leaving the United States. So that was just something to do because he needed something to do. It wasn't like, I'm leaving uh, world class to go wrestle for these guys. So that's exactly what it looked like. Mm-hmm. But that really wasn't his plan, and and he would have been happy just never wrestling ever again, because again, he didn't want to wrestle. He, but, according to the book, he, like he wasn't even a fan. He didn't even know anything about it. Yeah, he was he was clueless. All right, and just, and, and he he some he really can't even understand why people like it. Yeah. I mean. I, you know, sometimes it's funny that you say that because it's like I always try to justify professional wrestling until someone's sitting in the room with me and then something stupid happens. And then that's how I was just like, I can't believe I like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Certain things will happen. You know? But it's it's usually the, the childish stuff or something really ridiculous. Right. But, um, I do have, you know, two other questions. And then we can... Okay. I did see while doing research on Lance that I don't know if he talked about this at all. I didn't get that, you know. He worked a date for the Savoldis, the uh, IWCCW. Did he talk to you that, about that at all? I don't know if it was a one-off date or a couple dates. Uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, he didn't touch on a lot of that. He didn't touch on any of that. To be honest with you. Yeah. No, they were a group from the Northeast and you know New England uh, organization. So and. Uh, they were kind of like a special promotion to me growing up because they had oh. everybody at, at one point. You know, uh, Kevin worked there as well a number of oh, times. Oh, wow. Yeah. I spoke with Kevin about that uh, being a bad deal. I guess world, he sold world class to them and he never got paid so uh, for the money. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is that you mentioned that he wanted to leave the country. He married, he moved to South Africa and married a woman. Is that that's correct? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I guess he he was, I guess after World Class, he was just kind of, I don't know, in search of himself. I wouldn't say in search of himself, but wanted to change, wanted to, wanted to do some traveling. And he ended up, because uh, of Steve Simpson, he ended up, uh, uh, his dad kind of invited him, hey, you know, come come visit me or, you know, uh, if you come visit me, you can wrestle with me. And I guess he went to go visit the country and he, he ended up staying a lot longer than what he anticipated. And then he ended up getting married down there. And so, you know, uh, but he found that he could start businesses there and, you know, the, the country was really good to him, but he probably would have never, you know, again, you know, he, he talks about how his life turned out differently because of being with the, the Von Erics or working with the Von Erics. And though it wasn't a very good time for him, um, it, it still really worked out well for him, you know. And right. uh, I think I think uh, one thing that, uh, you know, I was kind of curious just when you were reading the book, uh, I guess what was one of your when you first started reading the beginning of the book, what were some of the things that just kind of jumped out at you, Rick, and just thought, wow, I, 
And well, the fact that he didn't know anything about professional wrestling, because especially in that area at that time period, like, if you didn't know who the Von Erics were, it's just, from what I understand, you know, I mean, obviously I didn't live there, I didn't grow, you know, but I just, um, I don't get it well, when people say they have know nothing about professional wrestling. I mean, it's, a, it's become quite a big thing, especially now, thing right. like pop culture, you know, it's just, so that kind of like really jumped out at me, and the, well... I, I think that to just follow up, he, you know, he he says that hey, it's hard. It was hard not to to live there and and yeah. not know who they were, but right. he couldn't comprehend the magnitude of their popularity until he saw it for himself. Right. And until I guess he, it was, that must have been pretty awesome for him, though. I mean, all of a sudden, be thrown into. I guess awesome in a way, and like you said, probably he became discouraged too at the same time. Yeah, you know what he said? Uh, that he he said that uh, it got to the point where he liked that, right? Well, you know, like he he got all this attention, right? But then it got, you know, over a period of time, it got too much, right? But when it stopped, he missed it too. So he he hated he hated being overwhelmed by it, and then he hated when it stopped. So it was like, and he, the, the way he tells the story is like, wow, it was really weird. I, I wasn't happy when I was getting the attention, then I wasn't happy when I wasn't getting the attention. Right. So it was, he, he, he said he just thought that was kind of weird, you know, that yeah. it got to be too much, but then he missed it. All right, before we go, tell me about the websites that you, 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 uh, you were mentioning earlier. Okay, I have a, a website called Russellville.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been up for almost four years. And um, I probably put maybe, I don't know, 15 to 20 stories on it a year. I guess maybe uh, this past year was probably my my least amount because I actually kind of stopped for a couple months so I could finish the book, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I have contacts that I, I, I follow the independent scene or if I, you know, think of somebody that I, I want to write about, I'll call them up and I'll, or I'll reach out to them or I'll have, Hey, do you know so-and-so or how can I get in touch with somebody? And I just call them up, interview them for about 30 minutes, write a story about them, put them on my website. And, you know, I, I love writing. Uh, I love telling stories and yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's just, I guess my, my way of being connected to the wrestling business, you know, or the sport itself, you know, Right. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to plug? Uh, basically, what I want to say is everybody go out and buy this book. It's a really good book. You're going to enjoy it. I, I hope that everyone will go out and buy the book. You can get it at uh, lancebychance.com. And, uh, of course, the, the book is about Lance. I want to share something real quick, if I can. Somebody sure. asked me the other day. They they said, um, and it, it was even in a write-up that um, – a very nice write-up that we got from Slam Wrestling, but she kind of questioned why there was a chapter of uh, Gina Hernandez in the book when uh, Lance and Gina weren't really close. They only known each other for about, I don't know, four to six months, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, four months. My answer to that is that that was a big event that happened right. in world class at that time. Mm-hmm. when Lance was there, and not only did it, you know, it tell the story of what happened with Gino, but it also kind of paints the picture of, you know, what that scene was like, you know, uh, there right. were a lot of, unfortunately, there were a lot of drugs in that, in that promotion, well, in the business, right, across the board, yeah. yep. um, and so it was one of those things that he experienced, it was one of those things that it did shock him a little bit because, again, you know, somebody somebody told me that the reason that they liked talking to Lance or like uh, listening to him uh, tell the story is that um, he's just so uh, you know subjective about the wrestling. It's like you know, well, they this is how they did it and this is how they do it, and it didn't even. You know, it wasn't like, right. for him, it was like, I don't, he wasn't married to it. Right. 
And um, so he's more prone to be very open about the business. And he was shocked by a lot of things. And he was, you know, he wasn't one of those guys, well, we can't talk about that because, you know, that you don't talk about that because you're a wrestler. And he's like, I'm, you know, even though he wrestled for 10 years, he, he probably doesn't even consider himself a wrestler, you know? Right. And it was just one of those things that happened by chance that mm -hmm. fate just kind of, <laughs> played a played a role and he fell into this position and you know i hope i hope people buy the book and 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 read it and they and they're surprised by the stories that are in it they they're entertained by the stories that are in it but you know mm -hmm. what somebody told me the other day um he liked so much he goes the one thing i really really liked about the book was every book that i've read about uh bruiser brody uh He's painted like a bully, you know, and everybody, oh, he was a bully and he, he, uh, bullied people and he wasn't, uh, easy to get along with. And, uh, boy, that wasn't Lance's experience with him at all. He was like a mentor to Lance. Um, he, uh, you know, uh, he got along well. Uh, Lance, uh, said that, you know, of all the guys that he was probably the, uh, uh, you know, the model for uh, a good husband and a good father, right. you know, and uh, a hard worker and a mind for the business and someone who really loved the business, you know, and, yeah. uh, you know, maybe, maybe Frank, uh, you know, maybe Frank had issues with people that maybe didn't love the business as much as he did, you know, uh, Lance didn't love the business, but I tell you, Lance respected a lot of guys like, you know, Frank and, you know, he respected guys like Jerry Gray and Sandy Barr and, you know, uh, the Dingo Warrior. You know, there's a lot of people in the business that he met that, you know, really he holds in high regard, you know. So I think uh, people are going to get to, if they, if they read the book, they're going to get to see some things and find out some things about world class that maybe they didn't know. And they're going to find things about them. Uh, his adventures overseas that you know they never even knew existed. So I, I, I think this is a good opportunity for people to uh, read the book and and learn more about Lance von Erich and what happened at World Class between 1982 and 87. All right. Wow. All right. Thank you. Do you have a social media that you want to plug at all? Uh, you can uh, find me at Vincent Berry on Facebook. You can find me uh, Vinny Berry on Twitter. And you can go to uh, LanceByChance.com and Russellville.com. And uh, there's a way to send me an email on both those sites. And, um, you know, you have any questions or any anything that I can help you with, reach out to me. And I look forward to talking to you and look forward to selling you a book. All right. Thank you very much.